I'm going to give you a little bit more details about how to connect the Nexion HMI display with a Raspberry Pi using Node-RED. Um, I'm going to go through the hardware part very fast because I want to focus the video on the, on the software part. <clears throat> then uh, I bought my my next screen in Aliexpress. This is the one that I bought. At the time, it was a little bit cheaper, about one euro cheaper than that one. But this is the, the source of my display. I used that uh, TTL adapter for connecting the the next screen to my um, to my Raspberry Pi. I I didn't use um, the pinout of the Raspberry Pi, which ha also has a TTL pins for connecting available for connecting um, uh, whatever device that you want. For example, the next gen HMI. I didn't use that because I use those pins for other purposes. Okay. Um, so in my case, it was busy, and I decided to use that adapter. When that adapter is connected to the Raspberry Pi, I use that uh, that rule uh, for creating automatically a link called TTY uh, HMI, which uh, will link the HMI to the the USB the serial USB port presented for the TTL adapter uh, using that content in the configuration file, just rebooting the Raspberry Pi, automatically you'll find that link that points to the serial port. Once you have that, uh, I'm going to introduce my my flow of the not red where I control the HMI. For doing that, uh, what they do is it's super easy. Uh, I mean, there is no secret. It's just using the serial node. I don't know if that node goes uh, is part of the palette of nodes of Node-RED, or I install that uh, part. But anyway, it's not something strange. Uh, here, I only set my HMI is in that in that device. No? Uh, the, f the speed, the baud rate, and the configuration of the serial port that I use for connecting with the port. It's very easy, as you can see, nothing else. Okay, and then I use this node for sending comments to the HMI, and this node for uh, reading comments, uh, for reading let's say, feedback that comes from the HMI. Uh, for properly understanding what is the, the protocol, Used for the for the next gen HMI. Just uh, you can go to the instructions of the. This is the editor of the next gen, where you can design the screens, or you can go to the web page of the next gen screens, where there is a description, uh, or more than a description, it's a the reference of the API, the serial API of that HMI. Uh, when yeah, here it is. Next instruction set, they say. Um, here you have different details about how to use the API or the communications protocol, which is used for exchanging data to the serial board and the, and the HMI. Of course, I didn't have to implement all those uh, comments, just a, a subset of them, which is the part of the comments that was required by me. Um, just for properly understanding what I did, uh, this is the design of my HMI. Here we have, for example, a text field. This text field is called uh, T1. Okay, then this is the name of the object. And here we have a property called TXT, which has a value uh, placa solar con uh, xx dot x etc. Okay, then if I want to change the value of that uh, field, the only thing that I have to do is just say t1.txt equals, 
whatever new value that I want to assign to that uh, text label. Okay, this is how it works. For example, the, it's like the, how to assign new values to, to labels using the serial protocol. Um, then, how to do that? For example, here, instead of T1, I used for this example T0. This is the common they want to send to the next one. Then that common, it doesn't do, do anything. This is just for knowing when this common was pushed. And then it goes to to that node. And in that node, the payload is formatted. OK. Then for formatting the payload, uh, let me see. Uh, nothing interesting here, because it's mostly for forgetting some diamond variables. OK. This is how the message is assigned. So nothing interesting. And it goes directly to the formatting output. This is the, the interesting part that you have to take into account, OK? Then having a source, which is that t0 dot txt whatever value, what I do before sending that comment to the serial port is that manipulation of the comment. So converting each of the bytes that I want to push the serial port to its uh, ASCII code, OK? Once I have the string converted to ASCII bytes, I push them, and finally I add uh, three three apps, okay, three characters that uh, allow the next screen, which is the end of the comment. Uh, finally, I create an object buffer, which is a binary object used for um, coding. At the end of the day, if you want to talk with, a, for example, a binary socket or a binary serial port, you have to use those objects for getting the binary value before the value is injected to the to the port. And as you can see, this goes directly to the to the HMI port. Then from another side, I'm I have that port open in at least uh, in the reading mode. When when a thing is is received, what they do is try to distinguish which which type of message is received. I only parse two, two types of messages. It will be type 102 and 101. Again, remember, it comes from, OK, if you go here, you have the proper details. Let me see uh, if I can find that partly. OK, here you have the different types of messages and how to decode them. Not much more than that. Uh, then if it's 101, I think it's the 66 and the 67, no? It's, OK, this is, this is the 101. It gives me information about which is the current page on the screen. And this one, it gives me information about what whatever touch event was launched. This is the format of the data that I that, that is received. Just parsing that data, I can understand which is the element which was clicked and things like that. And then pop, 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 pop. let me go back there. Just a second. Here is the flow. Okay. With that, I distinguish the type of the message. Depending on the type of the message, I'm going to do some actions or some other actions. OK, here, for example, in the first case, it was the, the page. Well, what is the page where, where, am I, where I am in the HMI? Then I just save that page in a global variable for showing or for making available this information to the rest of nodes. And with uh, Button capture. At the end of the day, what I try to do is uh, when there is some touch event in the screen, I identify which is the button, sorry, which is the, um, the element that was clicked. In this case, all of them are buttons. Yeah. Okay, the button number four, button number nine, etc. And then, depending on that, I put my business logic. And not much more than that. Okay, this is how I manage the next time HMI. Mm, the key thing of all that stuff is 
is how I send the stuff from to the serial port. So this part of the sorry, this part of the story is the the key thing, and the other critical part is uh, reading information that it comes from the from the serial port. In this case, what I do is just um, try to understand which is the common that I received, and depending on the common, I process the information in one way or another. So this is how I manage the next gen HMI from my Node-RED and running all of them in a Raspberry Pi.